Hey everyone, it's Russ from Crafter CMS, and we just launched 4.1.2. And of course, it's full of all kinds of enhancements and bug fixes and security patches and so on. And you can read about those in the release notes. But what I want to do is cover a couple of new features in the system that I think you're really going to like. So the first one starts here on the project screen with Create Project. And we've got a new capability here called Duplicate Project that allows us to create a new project based on an existing project in the system. But we're going to do that in the most efficient way by copying the repository and the index and the other resources that help us support that project, again, in the most efficient way without having to create the project from scratch and process all those resources into the system. So it happens much more quickly and much more efficiently than that other create from scratch kind of model which you see with create from remote Git repository or create from blueprints. And we think this is going to help with things like explorative development, where I want to just create a duplicate of a project that I'm already working on, do a bunch of work there, maybe keep it, or maybe just throw it away. And the same thing with QA. You know, I can get something set up, a fixture set up, and then create copies of that, play with those things, run tests against them, and then throw them away, but keep my test fixtures as the initial project. So there's all kinds of useful kinds of outcomes from this quick create kind of process. And this could even expand into other use cases in CI, CD and so on. So let's just take a look at how it works. I click duplicate project. I choose the project I wanna make a duplicate of, let's say demo, then I give it a project ID. So let's call it demo two. And you can see we had a friendly name here and then a project ID. We're done. We click review, review the information and click duplicate project. So the system begins to process and it's already done. And the site is up and running very, very quickly. OK, so this is a much more efficient way to create a new project. Now, another capability that we've added is something that we actually added in in earlier in 4.1 and that I didn't make a video of. So I'm going to show it to you now. And that's our site dashboard. So if I click on that here in this new project, you can see we've got a beautiful new dashboard, but because it's a brand new project, there's not a lot to show here. So let's jump to another project where there's a little bit more activity. So I'm going to go here and choose demo, the first demo, the original demo. And if we click on the dashboard there, okay, there's a lot more activity here, something much more interesting to look at. And again, you can see this is a much more uh, attractive dashboard than we had in previous versions, much more user friendly, the language is more user friendly and so on. And it's tile based here. Each of these tiles can be expanded and collapsed. Each tile has filters that apply for the kind of information that we're looking at and so on. And they try to give you interesting workflow options for the content in that dashboard. So things are very uh, efficient here from a use user experience perspective and very friendly. Now, real quickly, let's look at the dashboard items here. We've got some metrics at the top and we can choose the time frame for those metrics. We've got a recent activity that applies to just us. We've got on our unpublished work, pending approvals that are in workflow, items that are scheduled to go live or be published to, to live or staging. We've got recently published items, so we can see a, a history of what's been uh, published and who published it, and a new dashboard item here for expiring content. Right? We've always had this capability of, of putting expirations on content, but now we're bringing it front and center so you can keep your content uh, up to date, keep it fresh, or remove it when it no longer needs to be on your site, and it's easy to see when things are coming up uh, you know, that need to be handled right now or coming up in uh, 30 days or so on. We also have this great new activity feed uh, that shows us what our entire team is doing. And here you can see I'm the only one working in this project with my uh, little example here. So it's not as interesting as it normally would be, but this is a great tool to see what others are doing. And again, uh, just like the other dashboard items, it's filtered so I can choose uh, specific activities that I'm interested in, specific actors, and uh, specific timelines. So if I want to look at just a range, I can do that. So this gives me a really quick way for myself or my team members to see what's going on, who's doing what. Another small enhancement 
uh, is this ability to grow the sidebar here. And, um, you know, we've always been able to change the size of it, but now there's no, there's no limit on that. So let's turn off the editing capabilities for just a second there and hover over this. And you can see now we can sort of grow this as long or large as we want it. And uh, this can just really help if you're using long internal names in your project or you have some deeply nested structure and you need to grow this a little bit more. So this is uh, just a simple enhancement, but can help in some cases. And the last thing I want to show you is uh, user preferences. So all of the things that I do in the UI, like growing the sidebar here or opening items in, in the sidebar uh, or turning on editing tools and so on, these are all captured and stored as user preferences. Okay. And sometimes we want to be able to clear those. So we've added a new, new capability for that. So if I go up here to the right hand corner and click on the launcher, then I can click the account application and there's a new capability here to clear user preferences and I can do that per project per setting or I can clear everything at once okay so this is just a nice useful tool if you want to uh, you know get rid of some settings that you've previously set up in your environment thanks everybody for your time I hope this has been helpful and we're looking forward to hearing what you think of crafter CMS 4.1.2